Hello, I'm Davion Regular, the Playground Insiders. And I'm Gal Bashai from the Playground Insiders. Today we're going to take an in-depth look at 2020 Hall of Famer Kevin Garnett's tumultuous tender with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Although many people will remember Kevin Garnett for his championship run with the Boston Celtics in 2008, his best playing days were his time in Minnesota. After being named 1995 High School Player of the Year from USA Today, Garnett declared for the 1995 NBA Draft and was selected with the fifth overall pick by the Minnesota Timberwolves, becoming the first high school player drafted in 20 years. Following this, he paved the way for other greats such as LeBron James, Tracy McGrady, and the late Kobe Bryant. After a mediocre finish in his first NBA season, Garnett went on to lead the Timberwolves to eight consecutive playoff appearances. However, the team was plagued with constant playoff failure as they went on to lose in the first round for each year from 1997 to 2003. Garnett hoped to change the narrative by winning MVP in the 2003-2004 season, in which he led the Timberwolves to the number one seed with the franchise best 58-24 record. He led the Timberwolves in every major statistical category except for assist, which he was second to Sam Cassell, who was also an all-star. In his MVP season, the Timberwolves went on to win their first two playoff series in franchise history, winning the first in the first round over Denver Nuggets and in the second round over the Sacramento Kings. However, in the Western Conference Finals, the Timberwolves are outmatched by the much better Los Angeles Lakers, led by Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, Gary Payton, and Carl Malone. Following his MVP season, the Timberwolves missed the playoffs for the first time in eight years, as well as getting rid of Garnett's very close teammates, Sam Cassell and Latrell Sprewell. They also fired head coach Flip Saunders, who Garnett had a very close relationship with. Following two more seasons of failure, Garnett finally demanded a trade from the organization in 2007. After Garnett's 13 seasons in Minnesota, he was traded in a five-man trade for him to the Boston Celtics, join Ray Allen and Paul Pierce to eventually win an NBA championship. After being traded to the Boston Celtics, KG, Paul Pierce, and Ray Allen will only get one championship in the six years that they spent together in Boston. In pursuit of more championships, uh, KG and Paul Pierce were shipped off to Brooklyn, where they would later fall at the feet of a rising star in LeBron James. After two failed seasons in Brooklyn, KG thought it was only right to finish his career back in Minnesota where it first started. In Kevin Garnett's second stint in Minnesota, he had a much reserved role, providing veteran leadership and minutes off the bench. Two of the main reasons why Kevin Garnett returned to the Minnesota Timberwolves were one, to reunite with his head coach Flip Saunders, who the team had rehired back in 2014, as well as to help build around the team's new youth core, centered around number one overall picks Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins. As numerous knee injuries began to play Kevin Garnett, he played his last career game on January 23rd, 2016, bringing an end to a 21-year NBA career. Garnett was very close to the city of Minnesota's fans, teammates, and coaches. The question that now arises, what led to the salty relationship between him and the franchise? That answer would be Glenn Taylor, the owner of the Minnesota Timberwolves. KG is widely known for his larger-than-life personality, speaking about whoever and whatever topic that may come to his mind freely. KG has conducted many interviews post-career. In many of those interviews, most of the questions have been about Minnesota Timberwolves owner Glenn Taylor. In All The Smoke podcast with Showtime Sports, Kevin Garnett states, Like once I start seeing like the owner wasn't on the same page as is growing and making the team better like other teams. And then I got friends that were on other teams and you know, teams are getting better and they're going out trying to make, doing all this. And, and I would always feel like I was in the same spot as last. And that was frustrating. I wanted to affect what I could do. And I would just focus on things that I can control. And when I had a chance to um, change that, I did. But, you know, it was very frustrating putting everything into something and knowing that you need the other half to be able to complete these certain steps. So the Boston thing for me was, it wasn't about uh, anything else. I wanted to win in Minnesota and I wanted to be the first to, uh, I wanted to be the first to bring a championship to the city, but I need the other parts to it. And if Glenn wasn't gonna step up and do those things, then I had to actually make a career move. He was also asked a similar question about Glenn Taylor by TNT's Inside the NBA 
in which he stated, Totally understand him. I totally get it. And he's dealing with Glenn, who, who doesn't know shit about basketball. Glenn. Glenn Taylor is known for his skeptical basketball knowledge. For example, giving Andrew Wiggins a super max based off of a promise that he would get better, and also drafting Johnny Flynn ahead of all pro Stephen Curry. Glenn Taylor is the prime example of when a basketball owner with very little experience tries to get too involved with player allocation and putting his personal interests as a business owner above the player's interests of winning games, causing star after star to leave the organization, whether it be Kevin Garnett in 2007, Kevin Love in 2014, or Jimmy Butler in 2018. The Boston Celtics have already planned to retire Kevin Garnett's jersey in the 2020-2021 season. However, when asked if he would have his jersey retired in Minnesota, Garnett said he was not entertaining the idea. Since Garnett's departure, the Timberwolves have only made the playoffs one time in 2017, which also ended a 13-year playoff drought. And now with two rising stars on the team, Carl Anthony Towns and D'Angelo Russell, Taylor better have learned from his mistakes of the past if he doesn't want to make another fool out of the organization. Davion Reagan signing off of the Playground Insiders. You can hit me on Twitter at T-H-3-R-E-A-G-A-N. And you can reach me on Instagram and Twitter at Gaiashai. That's G-Y-A-S-H-A-I. See y'all in the next video. Peace.